Hi, my name is Dave Goulson. I'm Professor of Biology at the University of Sussex in the United Kingdom. And uh, I've been asked to talk to you today for Terra Madre about pollinators. Pollinators being my kind of specialist subject. I've spent the last 30 years studying bumblebees and other insects and what's causing their declines and, and what we can do about it. Um, and sadly they are in decline. Um, we've had some really worrying studies published in recent years um, uh, showing really rapid, uh, scarily fast rates of decline. Famously in 2017 a study came out of Germany which seemed to show a 76% drop in the biomass of flying insects over a 26 year period. But lots of other studies too, um, I'll spare you the details, but, uh, but it's quite depressing and really concerning because of course insects are hugely important. Um, insects make up the bulk of life on earth. About a million species of insect have been named so far, which is about two thirds of all known species. And they're food for um, the, the, perhaps the majority of the other species, certainly most bird species rely on insects as food, as do bats, many freshwater fish, um, uh, lizards, uh, amphibians and so on and so on. So, uh, so they will be impacted by these declines in insect abundance. But also insects do umpteen other important things in ecosystems. They're kind of involved in every ecological process you can think of. Um, recycling nutrients, recycling dung and dead bodies and dead trees and so on, keeping the soil healthy. And of course pollination. Um, I'm in my veggie patch here and I'm surrounded by bees visiting the flowers, busy pollinating. Um, but there are many thousands of species of insect that pollinate. It isn't just bees, there are also wasps, beetles, lots of different species of flies, butterflies and moths and so on. Um, but between them, they pollinate 87% of all the plant species in the world. Um, which is obviously nearly all of them. Um, they, they would disappear without pollinators so they can set seed. And they pollinate 75% of the crops that we grow in the world. So without pollinators, um, we wouldn't have most of our fruits and vegetables. We wouldn't have um, strawberries or blueberries or raspberries or uh, pumpkins or tomatoes or chili peppers or even things like coffee and chocolate they all depend upon insect pollinators so we really need to look after these little creatures. Um, so how can we do that? Well the good news is that actually we it's quite easy uh, that we could turn this all around insects don't have to continue declining. Um, we can help them and we can all get involved in that and that's one of the nice things about this subject is it's something, unlike many big environmental issues, it's, it's something that we can all help with. Um, so for example, if you have any kind of garden, you can make it insect friendly, you can grow flowers to attract them, you can provide them with quiet places to nest and so on. I've written a whole book, uh, The Garden Jungle, about how to invite insects in to live with you in your garden um, and to tread more gently on the planet. So that would be great. Imagine if everyone made their gardens insect friendly, that would really help. But of course, gardens don't cover that big an area compared to farmland. And the big driver of insect declines has been the way farmland uh, has changed. The way farming has intensified over the last hundred years. Um, and as part of that, the adoption of use of lots of pesticides in farming, insecticides and also other chemicals which are harmful to insects. Um, and we've ended up with a system of farming which, with this sort of industrial monocultures, which has made the land completely hostile to life apart from the crop itself. And I personally think that's nuts, that it's not sustainable in the long term. It's wiping out biodiversity, it's damaging the soils, it's polluting the streams and the rivers and the seas, and it's contributing a lot to climate change. We have to stop and find another way of growing food that works with nature rather than against it. And there are lots of ways of doing that. We could um, push for proper integrated pest management, IPM in farming, 
right across Europe, ideally across the world, um, uh, which is really treating the pesticide as the last resort rather than the, the first resort. Um, there's more to it than that, but I, I will spare you the details now. Um, but actually, I prefer more radical solutions to the, to the biodiversity crisis. I think we should be looking to completely change the way we grow food. In fact, I'd rather it look more like this, where we're standing now, a mixed a vegetable patch full of a diversity of different crops with no chemicals being used at all. It's really productive and it's bursting with life. And there are ways of farming that mimic this kind of small-scale agriculture. Uh, things like agroforestry, permaculture, biodynamic farming, organic farming, and so on. There are examples out there of people growing food very successfully, making a good living, but producing healthy food, fruits and vegetables, things that are actually good for us, that aren't drenched in pesticides, and, which, uh, and where they can be grown in ways that, that support healthy populations of not just insects, but of all life. We need to work with nature rather than constantly trying to control it and kill it um, we need to change and i think the slow movement uh, slow food movement is a fantastic way forwards thank you very much for listening